Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is America's Industrial Age. So we're going to talk about five points or five terms that you should key in on as you do some reading about this time period. Now, we're not looking necessarily for these at things like labor violence or unrest, but more broad themes to make sure that we see that America is transforming during this time. And it's important to see kind of how that is happening. So let's, let's get into this. So the first one is kind of a broad term. And that term is urbanization. You're going to see public space, and particularly urban public space, transform in the second half of the 19th century and in the early 20th century. America's population is going to grow exponentially throughout the 19th century. And by the time you get to 1920, that particular census would record for the first time more Americans living in urban areas than living in rural areas. Now, Suburbia is going to grow here as well, but of course that's largely a post-World War II concept and we'll get to that eventually. But when we're talking about the transformation of urban space in the second half of the 19th and in the early 20th centuries, we're talking about a few components that help to make that happen. Certainly, changes in agricultural technology, which means that you needed less individuals on farms, so certainly the corn mix. Reaper and John Deere's tractors and all this stuff, right? You're going to start to see internal migrations, right? From rural to, to urban areas. Uh, population growth overall, right? This is going to be a factor. Immigration, this is also going to be a factor. Uh, and certainly the manner in which the economy is transforming as well. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a factor. And also transportation, uh, transportation technology, right? The ability to move uh, from one part of a city to another here, right? So the rise of subways, uh, different kinds of trains are going to be a part of this. Certainly uh, cars, right? All of this. Uh, and the kinds of, of space that individuals will be living in, uh, right? It's this time period in which the skyscraper is going to be first introduced. Uh, but of course, tenement housing is where a lot of these, these individuals are going to be coming in. Second, populism. 1880s, 18, really 1890s is a time period in which the, the National People's Party, the Populist Party, is going to grow in prominence. So this is primarily outside of urban areas. This is primarily in rural areas uh, where farming families and others feel that their community identity is being attacked by this kind of urbanization, by this kind of transformation, and they want to be able to have their voices heard politically. William Jennings Bryant perhaps would be a, a key figure with this, uh, and his what's called the Omaha platform for that party would be good for you to kind of focus in on. Third, Taylorism. One of the aspects of the progressive era of the late 19th and the early 20th century was that there's a rise, of course, in uh, different kinds of, of scientific disciplines, and certainly that's going to be applied to industry and industrialization. Frederick Winslow Taylor wrote a book called The Principles of Scientific Management, uh, and what he tries to do is argue for what we might call industrial efficiency, right? So you can, you know, time out the production of something, right, this kind of thing. But of course, sadly, this is also going to be applied in the time period to race, uh, you know, as well. But Taylorism and this idea of quantifying and kind of, you know, applying this efficiency uh, to industry is going to be seen as a, a professional act and a positive act by those who embrace it uh, in, in this period. Fourth, vaudeville. Vaudeville. So today, right, we have YouTube, obviously. Uh, we have all kinds of things across social media and the internet, ways to get content in streaming services. But at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, if you wanted, and if you were in particularly an urban area, uh, you wanted to catch shows, uh, you might go to a vaudeville uh, theater uh, where you would catch lots of different kinds of acts uh, which would come through. There was a variety of them. Uh, so there might be comedy or drama or dance or performance. Uh, and you know, based on class and the neighborhood you were in, these would, of course, cater to different things. So sadly, of course, part of this is also going to play on race uh, and stereotypes and aspects of race in the period, which means things like uh, racist depictions uh, of African Americans in blackface, right, this kind of thing, you know, is going to be a part of this as well. Uh, number five, Nickelodeons. Right. So I know that for many of us, when we think of Nickelodeon, we think of the cable channel, uh, but Nickelodeons uh, are a way in which Americans can consume early film uh, at the turn of the century. 
Uh, so as silent film is being developed, uh, there would be these small film houses where you could go uh, with these machines and watch them. Uh, and, it, you know, in some cases only cost a nickel. So this was the whole idea. All right. Thanks so much.